Now to an epidemic a world away. The World Health Organization reports 5,335 cases of Ebola. Half its victims have died on its tear through five West African nations at its epicenter. In Liberia's capital of Monrovia, the More Than Me Foundation is running a school for girls, taking them from life on the streets following 14 years of civil war. It was founded by Bernardsville's Katie Myler. Her international staff was evacuated in August as Ebola spread. Katie got special permission to re-enter the quarantine area in Monrovia. She is there now working with the Ministry of Health, UNICEF, Doctors Without Borders. Katie joins us now on the phone. Katie, are you okay? Yep, I am. I am good. Thank you so much. What compelled you to go back there despite the Ebola crisis? Um, how could I not? I mean, I've been working and living in Liberia for nine years, and my heart is here. As I saw on the front pages of many major news um, sees that uh, pictures of West Point, which is an area where I've been working for the last, you know, I've been friends with people in, in West Point since 2007, um, and more than me works directly with girls from West Point. Um, so I, you know, and actually one of the photos that was, you know, that the media covered had a picture of one of my girls in it, and I was like, I can't sit here at home knowing that I can do something. Katie, what are you doing? What are you seeing? <laughs> oh, that's a very overwhelming question. Um, I'm, for now, we, we're coordinating all the efforts of, of different organizations who are working in West Point. We, we have an awareness team. We have a team that specifically checks on our girls three times a week, checking their temperatures, making sure that they have everything they need and that they understand what to do if someone were to get sick. We are um, we have an ambulance that the, that the community is um, running and, and the people running the ambulance are actually one of our students' dads and um, one of our teachers, our kindergarten teacher's um, brother is a part of that team. Right now there's nowhere to actually take, our ambulance isn't really able to work because there's nowhere to take sick people. All the um, treatment units are full. So what we just started today was home health care and um, our nurse Iris is um, helped start that up and is, you know, leading that team. Has the outbreak been capacity. subdued at all? Uh, I mean, absolutely not. It's the opposite. I mean, it's growing. You, we have, you have 10 people sick one day, the next day it's 30, then it's, you know, 60. It's just growing at exponential rates. Um, and, you know, to be, I mean, the World Health Organization has numbers and it's difficult to know if those numbers are, how reliable they are. I mean, and it's, there's a, the system is, I mean, people die, and it's hard to be able to tell if they have Ebola or not. Like, there's, the testing isn't, um, they're not all being tested, the, the dead people, or the, the test results aren't coming back to the community. Um, so to know if people are dying from Ebola or dying because of regular health, the health system failing, and, and you know, they're not able to get the attention they need, is hard to be able to determine. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yes, no, it's definitely not under control. I mean, I'm definitely, we're all excited for, um, Obama's promise and, you know, what the United States has pledged to do, but the reality is every single day um, this thing is getting worse and getting more out of control, so we need, you know, we just need, we need people to act fast. Okay, Katie. Katie Milers, please stay safe. Absolutely.